In the center of the wheel, you'll see this cap that covers all the lug nuts with a 22 millimeter socket. Let's remove all these caps that hold onto the lug nuts. <laughs> Now with the 22 millimeter socket as well, go ahead and take off all eight of your lug nuts and then we'll take the wheel off. At the top of the knuckle right here, you'll see where the 10 millimeter bolt attaches this bracket for the brake line. I'm gonna get the ABS wire out of here just so I can freely move this bracket around, squeeze on the top and on the bottom at the same time. And that should allow you to pop this out. There we go. Now with this disconnected, if you look to the right, you'll see the clip that holds the ABS wire in. We'll have to pop this off. So I'm gonna try and stick a trim tool in here. See if I can pry this out of here. If it breaks, we'll have to figure something out to resecure the ABS wire on the new control arm. But hopefully I can salvage this and it broke. Okay, that's all right. I have another one of these actually, but if you don't, you can either wire tie it to the new control arm um, or find some other method of securing it. So because I have another one, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this out of here and I'll use my new one on the new control arm. We'll leave this here ready to go. On the right of the control arm, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds your brake hose in place. Remove that. Okay, that broke, that's fine. I have a new one of those too. Take this shield off, for me, it's kind of half broken, so I'm just gonna peel it off of these push clips and set it aside. Just so I can play it safe, I'm gonna take the ABS wire out of this retainer as well, so I can get extra slack out of it. That way, if for some reason it wants to pull it more, I have the space. There we go, now the ABS wire has plenty of space to come down with the knuckle. So I'm gonna free up these bolts before I take the control arm out of the knuckle just because it'll be a lot more sturdy this way and it's not gonna wanna twist and move around hopefully. So I have a 20 millimeter wrench on the bolt side. Not sure if it's 20 because it's rusted or because that's the actual size. Either way, 20 on the bolt side and I have a 21 socket on the nut side. I'm gonna try and break it free with my breaker bar first. Okay, so that broke free. I'm gonna switch to a ratchet so I can hopefully ratchet this off. The nut is coming off surprisingly easy and the bolt is moving. That is a very good sign. As you can see, the bolt does move around. That's perfect. Keep in mind approximately how the alignment camber bolts are set up. Uh, I'm just gonna remember the position that mine are in. Over here, it will be a little more tricky just because I have some things in the way. This brake line, wiring harnesses, and the, bolt act, and the bolt actually is inside of here in the strut tower. So that's not gonna be as fun. So I'm gonna try and break this bolt free with my wrench. What I'm going to try to do is put a 3 8 21 socket on here so it fits, but I'm gonna remove this bracket over here to make it fit better. 13 millimeter socket, take this off. All right. All right, now we have a lot more space to work here. All right, so I'm gonna try and break this thing free. At this point, I'm gonna take my 21 millimeter wrench. This bolt's a 21, not a 20, so I think the other one was just rusted down to a 20. And let's see, oh yeah, bolt spins. I'm gonna try and push it through a little bit so I can get my socket out of here. There we go. Okay, go ahead and take the nut off. Okay, nut came off, perfect. I'm gonna leave this bolt in. I know it moves, I know it slides in and out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it in for now so it can support the control arm and now we can take it off the ball joint. I put my pole jack underneath the lower control arm and I'm supporting the weight of it. That way when I take off this nut and it separates, nothing goes flying and everyone is safe. So with an 18 millimeter socket, let's remove this ball joint nut here. Move your wires and hoses out of the way. That way you can hammer on here and break the ball joint free from the knuckle. Okay. 
There we go. Get this out. Knuckle falls down. That's fine. This can stay right here. Now we can work on the upper control arm. At this point, I'm going to remove these bolts. I'll show you in a second, but this bolt actually has to separate from the alignment uh, pivoting washer here. Not separate, but you have to slide that down so it can actually come out. It's hard to see. I can't even see. So that's why I said I'll show you once the bolt's out. So basically, so basically this is what has to happen. This has to slide down so you can pull the bolt out before it hits, before this hits the spring. And then you can remove the whole thing. Remove this side as well. There it is. And now you can pull the upper control arm out of its spot. And there it is. Grab your new control arm. Make sure the hoses are going um, where they are supposed to, not getting pinched behind or whatever. So slide this in. If you need to, you can use a rubber mallet and just persuade it into place. Okay, I think, yep, for me this bolt lines up, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. Now, before you put this in, if you still have your factory alignment tab in, just go ahead and pop this off. You can do this easily with a pry bar or screwdriver. And this is going to allow your alignment professional to line it up where it needs to be for the new control arm, because this is just here for the factory for when they assemble everything. That way the factory doesn't have to do an alignment. It's already preset. So now you can put this in. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put the nut on while I'm at it. Then we'll move to the front and do the same over there. I popped off the alignment tab for the front too, and I removed the plastic retainer. Now let's fish this bolt in. I'll quickly look through, make sure that this lines up. I don't think it lines up yet. If I look through the hole here, it doesn't line up yet. So I'm gonna give it a couple taps with the rubber mallet and yep, now it lines up perfectly. Let's get this front bolt in here. Oh, there we go, finally. So that went in. I'm just gonna double check that the alignment plate is in its spot, which it's not. So that's important, you wanna make sure that it is. It's got this little pin here on the inside. It needs to line up with that. Oh, it's in, all right. There we go. So the alignment, now get this outer one on. It will only fit one way because of the cutout on the bolt. Just make sure when you push this on that you don't push the whole bolt through. And after you're done with that, and now let's put on the mounting nut. We'll go ahead and uh, bottom it out, but I'm not gonna tighten it yet. This control arm, you have to tighten with the control arm at right height. So we're gonna set that. And the way you set the control arm to right height, right height's gonna be right about here. And I like to just put a pry bar through the spring set it here, that's gonna hold it for me. Now we can torque the mounting hardware. Keep in mind, again, like I said before, you still need an alignment, so just eyeball it to where it was before, and then go ahead and drive down to your local alignment shop, they'll do this for you. And I've kind of eyeballed both of them, so let's get these tight. I'm gonna start with the rearward bolt. And now move to the front bolt. All right, let's go ahead and torque them to 129 foot-pounds. All right, that's 129 right there. All right, this one I have to use a 3-8 socket, unfortunately, but that's the only way that's gonna make it fit. 129 for this one. There we go. I'm gonna reattach this harness, the bracket for the harness. At this point, we need to bring the control arm down into the knuckle. All right, now make sure your brake hose is up on top of the control arm. Same with the ABS wire. Now we'll have to bring the knuckle into position. Now I'm gonna take a pry bar and I have my mounting nut ready. As I pry down on this, it's gonna to wanna to put the control arm into the knuckle. And I'm gonna start the mounting nuts, just a couple threads. That way at least it's secured. All right, now I can let go. Double check that these are routed properly, which they are. 
let's uh, tighten up this nut. Torque this to 37 foot-pounds. At the top of the ball joint here, there's a grease fitting, so you can grease the ball joint up when you need to. Use a seven millimeter wrench or socket to snug this down. Don't over tighten it because it'll break very easily. And now let's get the grease gun and grease this up. Lock your grease gun on and add grease until you can see the boot start to expand. Okay, the boot is starting to expand. Give it a couple more pumps. There we go. All right, that should be good right there. If for some reason you put too much, it's just gonna start bleeding out everywhere. So it's really impossible to put too, too much. Let's remount the bracket for the brake hose. I have a new bolt here. I'm just gonna go ahead and snug this down. All right, that's mounted. And on the other side, let's mount the ABS wire, just like that. Let's also mount it on top of the um, frame here. I took it out, perfect. Put this back onto the knuckle, start in the bolt. I'm just gonna secure this wire like this. Make sure it's nice and tight and cut off the excess. Let's get the wheel back on. Start on all of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and then torque them to 140 foot-pounds. Last but not least, don't forget about the cap that covers up your lug nuts. Slide this on, and it's best to thread this on by hand because these plastic caps can break and strip out easily. So just make them snug enough to hold this in place. You don't have to go crazy tight on these. Okay, take it for a road test.